Hi, my name is Ian MacDonald. I currently work as an independent consultant and trainer and have over 40 years experience working in IT, uh, mainly around the financial services sector. During that time, I've had plenty of opportunities to be involved in and lead improvement opportunities, big and small. I have a real passion for continuous improvement and I've always looked to apply that in every role, every department that I've been involved in. If I have a claim to fame, I am actually an ITIL accredited author and I've also been involved in the QA of ITIL publications. So, what should you expect from the Continual Improvement Masterclass? Well, I start from the premise that continual improvement is really, really important. It's a great driver of customer satisfaction, those low cost, no cost improvements that maybe the customer didn't even ask for, but you've recognised by making those improvements, you can improve the quality of the service that they provide to their customers. What a fantastic demonstration of value add by the IT organisation, the service provider to its customers. That said, organisations do seem to struggle, you know, kickstarting and maintaining uh, focus on continual improvement. Some of that might be cultural. Yeah, sometimes it's seen as well. That's what the service guys do. Yeah, it's nothing to do with us in the technical teams. It's the guys in the front end dealing with customers day in day out. It's their responsibility. It's not true, but that's what people believe. Maybe also it's a um, an excuse in the sense of we're not quite ready yet. We're not a mature organisation. We haven't got all the prerequisite roles processes, forums, yeah. Um, maybe ITIL itself didn't help in version three, the continual service improvement book was the fifth book. Maybe it painted a picture or a message that it's the last thing you do when you've done everything else. And that's not true either. So, in ITIL four, things change. The name's changed. It's no longer CSI, continual service improvement, it's continual improvement. And that says that actually this is applicable to everybody every role, every activity in the service provider organisation. So no matter what you do, somewhere along the line, if you improve it, it will add to and it will deliver improvements to the products and services overall uh, that you provide. ITIL 4 also provides great guidance through its guiding principles, how to kickstart, adopt and adapt, continual improvement to what you do. Yeah? So no matter how far down the ITIL journey you are, no matter how mature you believe your organisation is, some practical things to kickstart practical, pragmatic, continual service improvement. That's really good. So in the masterclass, we build on that. So we look at the cultural things to consider. What are some of the basic sort of uh, things to have in place just to give a platform for continual improvement to be uh, successful? But fundamentally, how do we make continual improvement something that everybody in the organisation actually recognises as important and embraces? So there'll be guidance on some of the practical things you can do, some of the methods and approaches to identify improvements and demonstrate the value from all the different areas of IT in your organisation. We'll also look at the importance of how you communicate and demonstrate the benefits from continual improvement. In a lot of organisations, we do some really, really good things, but we convey them in IT talk and IT speak. The business customer doesn't always understand. Even though you may have actually made some real positive difference to their business, they don't always understand or recognise it. So that's really important too. So I would like to think you walk away from the masterclass with some really, really good practical ideas on how to kickstart continual improvement in your organisation. I look forward to seeing you.